Let's talk about content security policies. So first question, why should I care? Um, and, and if you watched my previous video about XSS or cross-site scripting, that should give you a good idea about why you should care. So um, if you haven't, I'll put a link up in the somewhere. Um, but the gist of it is a content security policy allows you to, in a really granular way, um, describe what you allow, what content you allow, and from where you allow it, and how you allow it on your web page. This prevents scripts from calling out to any other origin. Like, this prevents somebody loading a script from like hackers.com on your website because your content security policy doesn't allow it. It's actually really great for fine-grained control of what content your website is allowed to render or call. So it's, it's a huge security benefit here. And so you might be thinking, great, that's fantastic. How do I use it? And before we talk about how, we need to talk about where. I've seen content security policies being used really in three different places, um, and I'll list them in maybe descending order of frequency I've seen them used. The first is from a server in headers. So when a server sends you a web page, it includes with it headers, which is just a bunch of information about the server. For example, I'm sending you HTML page. By the way, I'm the server and this is my identity. By the way, I'm the server and this is my content security policy. I only allow scripts from this site, I only allow images from that site, and so on. So headers is one way. Uh, a second way is meta tags on the client side. Um, but as you can imagine, this has some limitations, so not the best. And then the third way, I haven't really seen that much, but I, I, I think it's mostly to do with like Chrome extensions or something, and that is to include a manifest.json with your content security policy in there. Um, I won't be covering that because it's not really common. Now that we know where to put the content security policy, how do we do it? How should it look? Well, we've already agreed and decided to do it via server sent headers. So we have a header called content security policy. The value of this header is the content security policy. It's how your website deals with contents from different sources. Content security policies are written using things called directives. There's many, many directives. We won't cover them in this video, but I'll add a link in the description to maybe all the directives. We will talk about though the most common directives. And by far, the, the default directive, the, the foundational directive, is called default source, default-src. And this tells the, the page that is being rendered from your uh, server sent content security policy, um, whatever happens, this is the policy for everything. So if you set default source to self, in single quotes, and that means I'm only going to load things from my own domain. Nothing cross domain is allowed on this page. It's already quite secure. You can then uh, more granularly describe how you deal with scripts, so that is JavaScript, uh, or images, or media, and so on and so forth. And you would delimit different directives in your content security policy using semicolons. So you have a default source self, semicolon, script source, scripts.com, semicolon, image source, imager.com, um, and semicolon, media source, I don't know, whatever you like, youtube.com. Um, I don't even know if you can do that, but that's generally the gist of it. Um, so you, you have a default source and then you can, you know, change allowed sources per type of content. And that's how you do it. So these are the basics. Let's look at how we actually implement one. Uh, so we'll, we'll add a header and we'll add some directives. But if we just send a content security policy like this, we might end up with a blank page because there's a good chance that we have stuff loading in from a lot of other websites, especially images, as you can imagine. Um, so maybe that's not ideal. Maybe we want to iteratively add this and we can do that. If we tweak our header just a little bit and instead of content security policy, we change it to content security policy report only, then what's going to happen is the policy is still being sent to the browser but is not being enforced. Instead, the browser just reports what violations happen. So then you can look at your console, you can see what's not allowed, and go tweak your content security policy as needed. And once there's no more warnings, once everything looks pretty good, you can remove the report only and enforce the content security policy. So that's a great way. Um, you can also, for greater observability, um, add a report URI directive, and this will send a post request on every violation to whatever URI you give it, um, containing information about 
this violation. And then you can choose to respond to it however, however you want. You can choose to store it in a database, you can choose to send it to Sentry or Datadog or something, whatever you want. Um, but every time there's a violation, the browser will send that URI a notice so that you can keep an eye on what fishy activities are happening on your website. That's essentially it for the basics, at least. There's way more. As I said, links in the description. What more do you have to say about content security policies? Leave us a note in the comments or at me on Twitter. For now, that's been it. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.